Threat. Basic patterns. That dog is very threatening. The idea of change threatens some people. He was warned about a possible threat. Predators were a threat to the herd. His crops were threatened by the lack of rain. Are you threatening me? People can act violently if they feel threatened. My cat is no threat to anybody. This wind is threatening to become a storm. His tone of voice held a subtle threat. If you aren't home exactly on time tonight, we are going to have to punish you. If you come home late, then you won't be able to talk on the phone for two weeks. Give me everything, or I will use my gun. Don't try to call for help until I'm long gone. Otherwise, I'll have to hurt you. If you don't work late tonight, then don't bother coming back to work at all. Dialogue 1 Remember your curfew tonight. I will. I mean it. Your mother and I will not tolerate you coming home late again. It's not that big a deal. Yes, it is. If you aren't home exactly on time tonight, we are going to have to punish you. You're not serious, are you? You are going to be grounded. What does that mean? We are going to take away some of your privileges. Like what? If you come home late, then you won't be able to talk on the phone for two weeks. That's not fair. Also won't be allowed to hang out with your friends for two weeks. That means no going out for fun. You will go to school and come straight back home. That's unreasonable. It's the only solution that we can think of to make sure that you keep your curfew. Why can't you trust my word? You've been late three times in the past two weeks. One time, you were over an hour late. I promise I won't be late this time. I'd like to believe that. However, I'm still letting you know what will happen if you break the rules one more time. I said that I would be on time. There's no need to warn me about the consequences. I hope so. Dialogue 2 Don't move! What's going on? This is a robbery. Please don't hurt me. I won't if you listen to me. I'll do anything you say. Don't try to call out for help. I won't. Give me your wallet and watch. I'll give you my wallet, but not my watch. Give me everything, or I will use my gun. Please, my mother gave me this watch before she died. It has a lot of sentimental value. Don't make me use my gun. I'm begging you. This watch cannot be replaced. Please let me keep it. I'm telling you one last time. Give me the watch, or I'll have to hurt you. Okay, here it is. Good. Now lay down on the ground until I'm gone. Okay. Don't try to call for help until I'm long gone. Otherwise, I'll have to hurt you. Understand? Yes, I understand. Dialogue 3 Hello, Mr. Hughes. What can I do for you? I need you to work late tonight. I'm afraid that's impossible. You're going to have to. The company has an important meeting tomorrow, and we have to be prepared. I'm sorry, but I've already made some important plans. Haven't you been listening to what I've been saying? Yes, I have. You must understand how vital this meeting is. The company could lose a million-dollar deal if everything doesn't go perfectly. 
I understand all that, but tonight is a very special night. What's so special? Tonight is my 10th wedding anniversary. My husband and I have been planning a special evening for weeks now. You're going to have to postpone them. I couldn't possibly do that to my husband. He would be crushed. Well, it is going to come down between your job and your husband. What? If you don't work late tonight, then don't bother coming back to work at all. Isn't that a little extreme? This meeting is too important to be ruined because of your social life. So let me get this straight. You are going to fire me if I don't work late tonight? That is right. But I have been a loyal employee for years. I'm afraid that is your choice. Substitutions 1. Remember your curfew tonight. Be on time tonight. Don't forget when to be home. Keep in mind, we expect you home at 11 o'clock. 2. I mean it. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. I'm definite. 3. You are going to be grounded. You are going to be punished. You are going to be disciplined. You are going to be reprimanded. 4. We are going to take away some of your privileges. We are going to take away some of your freedoms. We are going to take away some of the things you enjoy. We are going to take away some of your rights. 5. It's the only solution that we can think of to make sure that you keep your curfew. It's the only solution that we can think of to make sure that you follow the rules. It's the only solution that we can think of to make sure that you be on time. It's the only solution that we can think of to make sure that you abide by our rules. 6. Don't move. Freeze. Stay put. Not another step. 7. I'll do anything you say. I'll do whatever you tell me. I'll do everything you want me to do. I'll follow all your instructions. 8. It has a lot of sentimental value. It means a lot to me. It reminds me of someone important. It has special memories. 9. Don't make me use my gun. Don't force me to use my gun. Don't push me to use my gun. Don't pressure me to use my gun. 10. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. I beseech you. What else can I say to convince you? 11. Understand? Is that clear? Are we straight? No questions, right? 12. 
I need you to work late tonight. I need you to work overtime tonight. I need you to work more hours tonight. I need you to work later than usual tonight. 13. I'm afraid that is impossible. I can't do that. It won't be possible. That can't be arranged. 14. You're going to have to. You must. This isn't a request, but a demand. There is no choice. 15. So, let me get this straight. So let's be clear. So let's make sure I'm not confused. So let's make sure we are on the same page. Monologue The feeling of threat can make people take some extreme actions. For instance, in America, people feel so threatened by the possibility they may be the victims of a crime that it causes them to want to own a gun. One of the main arguments against making guns illegal for private citizens to own is that people should have the right to defend themselves. The Constitution of the United States does have a provision about the right to bear arms in the Bill of Rights. However, according to some experts, this refers to the right of the states to have well-regulated militias to defend themselves. There is a lot of controversy whether or not this right extends to individual citizens. Either way, the fear of crime has greatly contributed to a belief by many that guns are a right of every citizen. They even say this in the face of the statistic that a person is more likely to injure himself or someone he knows than an assailant. Thus, it has been impossible to ban guns and difficult to even pass gun control legislation. People have even objected to such laws that would limit a person to buying only three guns a month and having to wait three days so that a background check can be completed to make sure criminals and mentally unstable people cannot acquire guns. <music> Worries Basic Patterns I'm worried about next week's test. Don't worry about me. I'm worried for your safety. Your driving concerns me. He doesn't seem concerned about his health. It's nothing that you should worry about. His actions have always been a worry to me. This new information is very worrisome. I'm a little concerned about the expense of this meal. He is a real worry to his mother. I've got some money troubles. I'm a musician, and I often don't have regular jobs. I'm good at English and history but I'm really awful at the natural sciences. I can't get rid of my worries. I know I'm being silly, but I'll worry about her for the rest of my life. Dialogue 1 Hey, Tim. How are you doing? A little stressed out. What's wrong? I've got some money troubles. I hope they're not too serious. If I can get a job soon, then I can stop worrying. I didn't know you were out of work. I'm a musician, and I often don't have regular jobs. 
I guess that is the life of a musician. My parents keep asking when I plan on getting a real job that has a regular salary. Why do you keep being a musician if it pays so badly? It's the job I love. I can't imagine doing anything else. So what happens if you don't get a job soon? I have to. My rent is due next week, and I have to make a car payment at the end of the month. That is a reason to be stressed. Not only that, but I also have to pay utilities and go grocery shopping. No wonder you're worried. This waiting for a job is nerve-wracking. Are you expecting a job? I'm supposed to hear from someone today. There is a bar that might want to have some live music on Saturday nights. I hope you get it. Me too. If not, I might have to go to my last resort. <laughs> What's that? Borrowing money from my parents. If I do that, then I will have to listen to another lecture about how I should find a more stable job. I hope everything works out for you. Dialogue two. How's it going, Stephen? Horrible. What's the matter? I have a big test tomorrow. I'm sure you'll pass with flying colors. I'll be lucky to barely pass. But you're such a good student. I'm good at English and history, but I'm really awful at the natural sciences. I take it that this test is in the sciences. It's the final exam for my biology class. You'll do better than you think. I can't get rid of my worry. Haven't you been studying hard? Yes, a couple of hours a day for the past week. Then you should have nothing to worry about. It's very difficult for me to learn biology. I can't seem to remember all the information I need to know. It's only one test. You don't understand. If I don't get at least a C on this exam, then I won't pass the class. Can't you take the class again? This should be my last semester. I'm supposed to graduate, but I won't unless I get a passing grade in this course. Oh, now I understand why you're so worried. I can't imagine having to tell my parents that I won't be graduating. I really want them to be proud of me. I think you're putting too much pressure on yourself. You'll never do well if you're this anxious. Dialogue three. I will really miss her. The house will seem so empty without her. It's natural that a child should move out of her parents' home and go off on her own. I know that, but I can't help worrying about her. She's only going away to college. But this is the first time she's ever lived away from home. She's smart and responsible. She'll be fine. I still worry about her. It's a parent's job to be concerned about her child's welfare. She's eighteen years old. You can stop worrying about her because she's an adult. No matter how old she gets, she'll still be my baby. You are going to worry yourself sick. Maybe I should call her to see if she needs anything. She just left. Give her some time to settle in. I hope she gets enough to eat and wraps up. I want her to stay healthy. She knows to do that. If she does get sick, there's a health center at the university. But they won't take care of her like I would. It's not that far away. If it becomes necessary, we can go get her and bring her home. I know I'm being silly, but I'll worry about her for the rest of my life. That's okay. We always worry about the one we love. Substitutions. One. A little stressed out. I've got some troubles. I have a lot on my mind. I'm a little tense. Two. I've got some money troubles. I'm concerned about my finances. I'm stretched a little thin this month. 
I'm a little short on cash. 3. Why do you keep being a musician if it pays so badly? Why do you keep being a musician if it doesn't make ends meet? Why do you keep being a musician if it doesn't pay the bills? Why do you keep being a musician if it can't cover your expenses? 4. This waiting for a job is nerve-wracking. This waiting for a job is very stressful. This waiting for a job is hard on my nerves. This waiting for a job is killing me. 5. If not, I might have to go to my last resort. If not, I might have to go to the last thing I want to do. If not, I might have to go to what I'm trying to avoid. If not, I might have to go to my least favorite option. 6. I'll be lucky to barely pass. I'll be lucky to get a D. I'll be lucky to get a passing mark. I'll be lucky to meet the minimum requirement. 7. It's the final exam for my biology class. It's the final exam for my chemistry class. It's the final exam for my physics class. It's the final exam for my anatomy class. 8. If I don't get at least a C on this exam, then I won't pass the class. If I don't get at least a C on this exam, then I will fail the course. If I don't get at least a C on this exam, then I won't get credit for the class. If I don't get at least a C on this exam, then I won't get a passing grade. 9. Can't you take the class again? Can't you repeat the course? Can't you try again next semester? Can't you have another try at it? 10. I think you are putting too much pressure on yourself. I think you are creating too much anxiety. I think you are making the situation worse. I think you are being too hard on yourself. 11. The house will seem so empty without her. The house won't be the same without her. The house will be lonely without her. The house will be so quiet without her. 12. But this is the first time she's ever lived away from home. But this is the first time she's ever been on her own. But this is the first time she's ever lived independently. But this is the first time she's ever lived by herself. 13. You can stop worrying about her because she's an adult. You can stop worrying about her because she's all grown up. 
you can stop worrying about her, because she's a woman, not a child. You can stop worrying about her, because she's a big girl. 14. No matter how old she gets, she'll still be my baby. It doesn't matter how old she gets, she'll still be my baby. I don't care how old she gets, she'll still be my baby. It makes no difference how old she gets, she'll still be my baby. 15. You are going to worry yourself sick. You are going to worry yourself to death. You are going to go out of your mind with worry. You are going to drive yourself crazy with worry. Monologue When asked what is their biggest worry, many Americans will say money. Money issues can be very stressful for some people. Even relatively well-off people in the upper middle class have financial concerns. One of the biggest money costs to the average family is housing. Unless a couple is independently wealthy, they either have to rent a place to live or take out a mortgage to buy a home. A mortgage is a loan that a bank gives to an individual to buy a home. This is one of the most significant debts that most families incur. The next most expensive household item is a car. For many families, two cars are necessary. America does not have a highly effective system of public transportation outside of a few large cities. Therefore, if both parents work, then they both need a car to commute. If only one works, then the other needs a car to run the daily household errands. Thus, a monthly car payment is added to the family's budget. One of the easiest and fastest ways to get deeply in debt is a credit card. Credit cards are easy to obtain and marketed extensively. It allows a person to charge up to his or her spending level per month. They must make monthly payments on what they charge. If they charge more than what they can pay in a month, anything still owed will have interest added on. People get into trouble when they have many credit cards and like to spend more than they make. Finally, if a couple has children, then they must also consider how to pay for their college education. A college education is becoming more and more necessary to make a decent living so enrollment rates in college are at their highest. All these costs can produce a lot of stress, and one of the main causes that lead to divorce is arguing about money. Deception Basic Patterns You tricked me! I was deceived in this business deal. His words were very deceptive. You allowed yourself to be deceived. Don't be fooled by his friendly words. He was completely fooled by his enemy. Don't let appearances deceive you. You can't fool me that easily. He was tricked out of his money. I can't believe I was such a fool. She would have contacted my parents if I couldn't have come up with a good excuse. It's only a white lie, so it's no big deal. My conscience would weigh heavily on me. I had to make something up so I wouldn't get into trouble. Are you sure that you had to be dishonest?
Dialogue 1. Are you feeling better? I'm feeling fine. I haven't been sick. But our teacher said that you missed class because you weren't feeling well. She said you caught the flu. Oh, that's right. I had to tell her I was sick so she would excuse my absence. You mean you weren't sick? No, I'm healthy as a horse. Why would you lie? I didn't want her to tell my parents that I wasn't in school. She would have contacted my parents if I couldn't have come up with a good excuse. Why would you lie to both your parents and your teacher? I really wanted to go see a movie. Why didn't you wait until after school? It was only showing once, and it was a matinee. It's not good to lie to people. It's only a white lie, so it's no big deal. What about the work you missed? Since our teacher thinks I was sick, she's letting me make up the work. So really, I didn't miss anything. What if you get caught? I don't think I will, but even if I do, the movie was worth it. Even if you get into serious trouble? Even then. Dialogue 2 How do you think you're going to do on tomorrow's test? Not very well. I haven't been paying much attention in class lately. What if I told you there was a surefire way you could get an A? I wouldn't believe you. I don't know any of the material that will be on the test. That doesn't matter. I promise you there's a way. Do you want to know? Absolutely. I'll tell you, but you have to promise to keep it a secret. I swear I will. I've got all the questions and answers to the test. All you have to do is memorize the answers to get a perfect score. Isn't that cheating? Yeah, but don't you want to pass? How did you get it? I stole a copy of the test from the teacher. She doesn't even know it's missing. What if we get caught in the act? We can't get caught. All we have to do is make sure we remember all the answers. The teacher won't suspect a thing since there are no papers or other evidence to prove us guilty. I don't know about this. Come on, what do you have to lose? We could fail the test and get suspended for cheating. I told you that we aren't going to get caught. I just think cheating is wrong. My conscience would weigh heavily on me. Do you want to fail? Of course not. Then how else will you get a good grade? I'll have to think about it. Dialogue 3 I heard you got a flat tire this morning on the way to work. I really didn't. What do you mean? I had to make something up so I wouldn't get into trouble. What really happened? I was up very late last night, so I didn't get much sleep and woke up very late. Why didn't you just tell the truth? Because the truth sounds irresponsible. Why did you get to bed so late? I went to a party and ended up staying later than I planned. Being late because of car problems is more professional than saying I overslept because I partied too much the night before. That doesn't sound very responsible. Did you miss anything this morning? I missed a very important conference, so I couldn't tell the boss the truth. He would have fired me on the spot. Why do you think he would be so harsh? Because he had to cancel the conference because I was absent. Are you sure that you had to be dishonest? Wouldn't he have understood? I had to lie. He doesn't really like me, and he's just looking for any excuse to fire me. Do you think he believed you? I have my doubts, but he couldn't prove I was lying to him, so he had to accept my reason. How do you think he feels about you now? I think I'm hanging on to my job by a thread. I believe if I screw up one more time, I'll be out of a job. I guess you'll have to be extra careful. I'll have to stay on my toes. Substitutions 1. She said you caught the flu. She said you caught a cold.
She said you had a stomach ache. She said you got food poisoning. 2. No, I'm healthy as a horse. No, I'm in tip-top shape. No, I'm in wonderful health. No, I couldn't be better. 3. Why would you lie? Why not tell the truth? Why be dishonest? What were you covering up? 4. It's only a white lie, so it's no big deal. It's only a white lie, so it's not serious. It's only a white lie, so it won't hurt anyone. It's only a white lie, so it won't affect anything. 5. What if I told you there was a surefire way you could get an A? What if I told you there was a definite way you could get an A? What if I told you there was a guaranteed way you could get an A? What if I told you there was a certain way you could get an A? 6. I'll tell you, but you have to promise to keep it a secret. I'll tell you, but you have to swear not to tell anyone. I'll tell you, but you have to promise not to speak about this to anyone else. I'll tell you, but you have to keep your lips sealed. 7. What if we get caught in the act? What if we get found out? What if the teacher gets suspicious? What if the teacher sees through our scheme? Eight. I don't know about this. I'm not sure. I'm not certain this is for me. I don't know if I want to do this. 9. Come on. You should. Why not? Don't be afraid. 10. What really happened? What's the truth? What's the real reason? What in fact occurred? 11. He would have fired me on the spot. He would have fired me right there. He would have fired me immediately. He would have fired me in front of everyone. 12. Do you think he believed you? Do you think he saw through you? Do you think he swallowed your story? Do you think he accepted your account? 13. 
I think I'm hanging on to my job by a thread. I think my position at the company is precarious. I think my job here is tenuous. I think my future here is uncertain. 14. I believe if I screw up one more time, I'll be out of a job. I believe if I mess up one more time, I'll be out of a job. I believe if I slip up one more time, I'll be out of a job. I believe if I make a mistake one more time, I'll be out of a job. 15. I'll have to stay on my toes. I'll have to be conscientious. I'll have to be constantly alert. I'll have to be careful not to make a mistake. Monologue Skipping class is something quite common in American colleges. College is often the first time young people have a chance to live on their own without supervision. This excitement and novelty of being on their own for the first time often leads to some irresponsible behavior. Without a parent's nagging voice that they should go to school, some students slip into the bad habit of sleeping through classes instead of waking up on time to go to them. Not only do they miss the information that is taught in them, but they can also have their grades penalized. Colleges and universities recognize the problem of multiple absences, and some even require that professors reduce the grade of the student if he or she has too many unexcused absences. In order to get an excused absence, a student usually has to provide some proof. For instance, if he says he has been sick, then a teacher might require a note from the health center to prove his illness. If they must be away for a school activity, then they must have a note from the school sponsor of the activity explaining why the student must miss class. Therefore, even if a student has done A-quality work, he or she may still fail a class if he or she misses more classes than allowed by school policy. Sorrow Basic Patterns I'm so sorry this has happened to you. I can't deal with this right now. This is awful. Are you crying? I'll be okay in a moment. I miss my wife. These pictures make me sad. He's still grieving for her. She hasn't gotten over the death of her child. I just don't feel like talking about it. Why are you so upset? I feel like my heart is breaking. I'm not in the mood to talk right now. I'm really upset right now, and I think I'd rather be alone. In these cases, time to heal is the only thing that can help. Dialogue 1. Have you been crying? No. I think you have. You're right. I admit it. Why are you so upset? My boyfriend just broke up with me. That's awful. I feel like my heart is breaking. How long did you date him? We dated for six months. I'm so very sorry that you have to go through this. I just can't understand why he would do this. I thought he was happy with me. Did he give you a reason? 
He said that he stopped loving me. Do you believe him? It doesn't make sense. One day he seemed content, and the next day, out of the blue, he said he couldn't be in a relationship with me. When did he break up with you? Last night. I know that you don't believe this now, but time heals all wounds. I can't believe that right now. I've never felt this terrible in my entire life. Just remember that there are other fish in the sea. I don't think that I'm going to date anyone else for a while. Dialogue two. Hello, Martin. What's new? I'm not in the mood to talk right now. What's wrong? I'm really upset right now, and I think I'd rather be alone. Are you sure? Sometimes it helps to talk to someone, but if you insist, I'll back off. No, you're right. It might help to talk it over. Tell me what's on your mind. Last night, my dog died. Oh no! I'm very sorry. I miss him so much right now. Did you have him long? I've had him since he was a puppy. What did he die of? Old age. How old was he? He was fifteen years old. That's very old for a dog. You must have had many good years with him. Yes. Do you think that you will get another dog? I cannot imagine that any dog could replace him. I don't think I want to get attached to another animal anyway. Why not? Because it hurts too much when you lose your pet. It's just like when a person dies. I think you will feel differently when the grief passes. Maybe. Dialogue three. Hi, Jordan. Hello, Melinda. I just heard about your grandfather. I was sad to find out that he died. Thank you for your sympathy. Is there anything I can do? No, but thank you for offering. Would you like to talk about him, or is it still too painful? No, I really like to talk about him. It helps me to remember him, and I don't want to ever forget him. How did he die? He had a heart attack, and the doctors just couldn't save him. How old was he? He was eighty-two years old. He must have lived a very full life. Yes, he was very happy and active right up until the very end. This must be very hard on you. Yes, but it is hardest on my grandmother. Were they married long? They were married for fifty-five years. Not many couples stay together for so long. They must have loved each other very much. As far back as I can remember, I have always thought that they loved one another more than any other couple I've known. How is your grandmother holding up? It's like she's lost a part of herself. She doesn't talk much to anyone and just sits and cries over old pictures of my grandfather. That's so sad. Can anyone do anything for her? My entire family has taken turns trying, but she's inconsolable. I think that she just needs some time. That's probably true. In these cases, time to heal is the only thing that can help. Substitutions. One. Have you been crying? Have you been weeping? Have you been sobbing? Have you been shedding tears? Two. My boyfriend just broke up with me. My boyfriend just dumped me. My boyfriend just ended our relationship. My boyfriend just said he didn't want to go out with me anymore. Three. I feel like my heart is breaking. I feel like my world is ending. I feel like my heart has been ripped out. I feel like I've lost the most important thing in my life.
four. I'm so very sorry that you have to go through this. I'm so very sorry that you have to suffer this ordeal. I'm so very sorry that you have to bear this. I'm so very sorry that you have to put up with this. Five. He said that he stopped loving me. He said that he fell out of love with me. He said that he didn't think I was the one for him. He said that he didn't believe we were right for each other. Six. One day he seemed content, and the next day, out of the blue, he said he could not be in a relationship with me. One day he seemed content, and the next day, without warning, he said he could not be in a relationship with me. One day he seemed content, and the next day, out of nowhere, he said he could not be in a relationship with me. One day he seemed content, and the next day, all of a sudden, he said he could not be in a relationship with me. Seven. Just remember that there are other fish in the sea. Just remember that there are other boys out there. Just remember that you'll fall in love again. Just remember that you'll meet someone else. Eight. I'm really upset right now, and I think I'd rather be alone. I'm not in the mood to talk right now, and I think I'd rather be alone. Nine. Sometimes it helps to talk to someone, but if you insist, I'll back off. Sometimes it helps to talk to someone, but if you insist, I'll respect your privacy. Sometimes it helps to talk to someone. But if you insist, I'll leave you alone. Sometimes it helps to talk to someone, but if you insist, I won't bother you. Ten. No, you're right. It might help to talk it over. No, you're right. It might help to discuss things. No, you're right. It might help to get this off my chest. No, you're right. It might help to share my feelings. Eleven. Last night my dog died. Last night my cat died. Last night my hamster died. Last night. My parrot died. Twelve. I don't think I want to get attached to another animal anyway. I don't think I want to love another animal anyway. I don't think I want to care for another animal anyway. I don't think I want to feel affection for another animal anyway. Thirteen. Would you like to talk about him, or is it still too painful? Would you like to talk about him, or is it still too difficult? Would you like to talk about him, or is it still too upsetting? Would you like to talk about him, or is it still too distressing? Fourteen. He had a heart attack, and the doctors just couldn't save him. He had a heart attack, and the doctors just couldn't cure him. He had a heart attack, and the doctors just couldn't heal him. He had a heart attack, and the doctors just couldn't make him well.
15. As far back as I can remember, I have always thought that they loved one another more than any other couple I've known. As long as I can recall, I have always thought that they loved one another more than any other couple I've known. All my life, I have always thought that they loved one another more than any other couple I've known. No matter how far I think back, I have always thought that they loved one another more than any other couple I've known. Monologue Americans really love their pets. Having pets is a common occurrence in the United States. Common pets can include cats, dogs, birds, hamsters, and fish. Pet supplies and services cost Americans millions of dollars a year. People become so attached to their pets that they're willing to spend anything in order to keep them healthy. Veterinary services can get quite costly, and a growing industry in America is pet health insurance. This attachment or bond can be as strong as one between humans. Therefore, when a pet dies, an owner can feel as much sorrow as when a human being he or she is close to passes away. This sorrow leads them to treat their pet just as they would a loved one who has died. Some pet owners bury their pets just like people. There are even pet cemeteries that specialize in burials for pets, complete with funerals and coffins. They can also be cremated, if that is what the owner desires. Most people bury their beloved pets in the backyard or a special place. For instance, in my parents' backyard lies the remains of a dozen fish and four hamsters that were once the pets of my brothers and me. Fear Basic Patterns Dogs terrify me. I'm scared of heights. He's too afraid of getting hurt. Something has given him a bad fright. That man's eyes frighten me. That movie was terrifying. I'm still afraid of the dark. Drowning is one of my greatest fears. I'm not afraid to say what I think. Don't be frightened by the noises. If you turn off the lights, the monster will come out from underneath my bed. It will come out and eat me if you turn off the lights. I freak out every time I see a bug. Have you ever tried to overcome your fear? One day, you will have to face your fear. Dialogue 1. Jenny, it's time for bed. Just a few more minutes, please, Daddy. No, you need to be in bed now. It's very late. Can I get a drink of water first? One small drink. Are you ready now? Now I have to go to the bathroom. Okay, go then. Would you read me a bedtime story? Only if it is very short. Go pick one out. I want you to read this one. Jenny, this one has over a hundred pages. That's way too long. I'll go pick something else. Why are you stalling? I'm not stalling. Yes, you are. Tell me the truth. Why don't you want to get into bed? I don't want you to turn off the lights. Why not? You can't sleep in a bright room. If you turn off the lights, the monster will come out from underneath my bed. There are no such things as monsters. Yes, there are. I heard one under my bed last night. It will come out and eat me if you turn off the lights. I'll check under the bed. Look, there's nothing under here. Maybe it moved to the closet. Let's check the closet. 
No monsters in here either. Now it's time for bed. But I'm still scared. How about if I leave one small light on? Will that make you feel better? Yes. I'll try to go to bed now. Dialogue 2 Hi, Mary. Hi, Daniel. Are you busy? No. Why? I was wondering if you wanted to go to the new horror movie. Which one? The one about the giant insects. Definitely not. Why not? It looks really cool. I hate insects. They aren't real. Doesn't matter. I can't stand to look at any kind of insect. But the special effects in the movie are supposed to be great. My friend said that it looks like the bugs are going to jump right off the screen at you. That's not a big selling point for me. Also, the surround sound in the theater is so good that you can practically hear the bugs creeping up behind you. Stop it! What's wrong? I have to admit, I'm terrified of bugs. I avoid even looking at pictures of them. But this is just a movie. I still get too scared. Well, I guess I shouldn't pressure you. I would appreciate that. Why are you so scared of bugs? I'm not sure, but as far back as I can remember, I've always had this phobia of them. It sounds kind of serious. It is. I freak out every time I see a bug, especially spiders. Then you really wouldn't like the movie, because all the insects look like spiders, except they are the size of cars. Well, I hope you enjoy your movie. Maybe you can find someone else to go with. Dialogue 3 How are things going? Pretty good. I've just started a new job. What are you doing? I'm a veterinary assistant. I help the veterinarian take care of animals. That sounds like a job you would really like. You've always loved all kinds of animals. Yes, I really like working there. There's an opening if you're interested. I could give you a recommendation. I don't think so. Why not? It would be fun to work together. The job is great for you, but I don't think it would suit me. Are you sure? It would be easy to get you a job and the pay is decent. I'm sure. I really can't work there. You can't or don't want to? I can't. I'll tell you something that I usually don't tell anyone else. What is it? I'm terrified of dogs. Why? Dogs are very friendly and lovable. When I was six, a neighbor's dog attacked me. Ever since, I've been frightened of dogs, so I could never work in a veterinarian's office. Are you scared of all kinds of dogs? Any breed of dog scares me. Even the little tiny ones? They can't possibly scare you. Even those. Dogs are incredibly popular. They are everywhere, and it would be difficult to avoid them completely. Up until now, I've managed. Have you ever tried to overcome your fear? I once tried going to a therapist to get over my fear, but I stopped going. Why did you stop? Because it was too hard. He wanted me to constantly look at and touch dogs. But isn't that the only way to overcome your fear? I just wasn't ready. One day you will have to face your fear. I know, but for now, I'll just keep away from dogs. Substitutions 1. Archie, it's time for bed. Archie, it's bedtime. Archie, it's time to sleep. Archie, it's time to get under the covers. 2. Okay, go then. Okay, do it. Okay, hurry up. Okay, finish up. 3. Why are you stalling? Why are you delaying? Why are you playing for time? Why are you postponing the inevitable? 4. 
If you turn off the lights, the monster will come out from underneath my bed. If you turn off the lights, the monster will come out from my closet. If you turn off the lights, the monster will come out from the shadows. If you turn off the lights, the monster will come out from behind the dresser. 5. Will that make you feel better? Will that make you feel less scared? Will that make you feel more relaxed? Will that make you feel not so frightened? 6. Are you busy? Do you have plans? Are you doing anything? Want to go out? 7. It looks really cool. It looks really interesting. It looks really neat. It looks really exciting. 8. I can't stand to look at any kind of insect. I can't stand to touch any kind of insect. I can't stand to be near any kind of insect. I can't stand to handle any kind of insect. 9. That's not a big selling point for me. That doesn't appeal to me. That doesn't make me want to go. That really turns me off. 10. I'm not sure, but as far back as I can remember, I've always had this phobia of them. I'm not sure, but as far back as I can remember, I've always had this irrational fear of them. I'm not sure, but as far back as I can remember, I've always had this thing about them. I'm not sure, but as far back as I can remember, I've always had this feeling of dread about them. 11. I freak out every time I see a bug. I go to pieces every time I see a bug. I become insensible every time I see a bug. I go completely irrational every time I see a bug. 12. I could give you a recommendation. I could put a good word in for you. I could tell my boss about you. I could talk you up to my boss. 13. It would be easy to get you a job, and the pay is decent. It would be easy to get you a job, and the pay is respectable. It would be easy to get you a job, and the pay is enough to get by. It would be easy to get you a job, and the pay is enough to live on. 14. Dogs are very friendly and lovable. Dogs are very cuddly and cute. Dogs are very sweet and loyal. Dogs are very playful and steadfast. 15. One day, you will have to face your fear. One day, you will have to overcome your fear. One day, you will have to get over your fear. One day, you will have to conquer your fear. Monologue Phobias are things that people fear. Phobias are usually specific and go beyond just common fears because the fear of something is only labeled a phobia if it is extreme. Some people's phobias are so extreme that they can interfere with their daily lives. Phobia is the Greek word meaning fear. Oftentimes, phobias are given their Greek names. For instance, one debilitating phobia is agoraphobia. Agora refers to the Greek word for marketplace, so agoraphobia is used to describe the fear of many people. Some agoraphobics are so frightened that they cannot leave their homes. This prevents them from leading a normal life, since they cannot even go to the supermarket, much less to an office to go to work. Some of the most common phobias are of such things as dark places, snakes, spiders, and high places. 
For those with fears that interfere with how they live, they must seek help to overcome their fears. Psychologists can often help with this kind of disorder. They slowly introduce to the person what they most fear, and they repeat this process until the patient no longer feels scared. Reproach. Basic patterns. You need to stop being late to work. He reproached Tom for his careless work. The teacher admonished the whole class for their grades. I wouldn't do that if I were you. That's not a good idea. That is not okay. I can't believe you just did that. That was disgusting. You are very rude. You can't act that way in public. You would have had plenty of time to finish if you had started the book report when I first gave the assignment. I must admit that I'm very disappointed in you. You need to take this more seriously. You have no right to get on my case. I don't think you do. We are all depending on each other to do our parts. Dialogue 1. What can I do for you, Kimberly? I wanted to ask you a favor. What is it? I'd like to know if I could turn in the book report late. I don't know. Do you have a good reason? Not really. I just procrastinated too much. I let all the students know about this assignment a long time ago. I know, but I still haven't finished. You would have had plenty of time to finish if you had started the book report when I first gave the assignment. When did you start? Be honest. I started last week. Last week? You didn't leave yourself enough time to do this report. I know. Have you even finished reading the book that you were going to write about? No, I'm only about halfway through. I must admit that I'm very disappointed in you. You are usually such a good student. I, I won't ever procrastinate again. I hope you don't. Can I turn in the paper to you next week? Yes, you can. However, I'm going to have to take off some points. But why? because that is only fair to the other students. You will be getting more time, and it's not fair to give you the same points as someone who finished on time. I guess it's my own fault. Maybe next time you will make sure to finish your work when it is due. Dialogue 2. Louis, could you please come here? Yes, Mother. Didn't I ask you to do the laundry? Oh, I forgot. Louis, you're getting older now, and I'm going to start depending on you to get your chores done. I'm sorry. I'll do it now. No, now you need to set the table for dinner. I'll do the laundry after dinner. Have you finished your homework? No, I was going to do it after dinner. Then you can't do the laundry and your homework at the same time, can you? I guess not. Now, I'm going to have to get the laundry done. I really am sorry. You have to remember your chores. I work all day. When I get home, I'm very tired, but I still have to fix dinner and wash up. I have too much to do, and I really need your help. I feel really bad. Isn't there anything I can do to make up for forgetting the laundry? Just don't forget again. I won't. Will you go set the table, please? Right away. Dialogue 3. Hi, Doug. Where were you today? What do you mean? Why weren't you at basketball practice? Oh, I had a date. I can't believe you. Why are you getting upset? It's only one practice. Every practice is important right now. 
We are getting ready for the championship game. I'll be at the next practice. Don't worry about it. You need to take this more seriously. Don't make such a fuss about one practice. I'll be at the next one. You better. You have no right to get on my case. Yes, I do. What makes you think that? Basketball is a team sport, and all the members of the team must work together to win. Okay, I get it. I don't think you do. We are all depending on each other to do our parts. We must all work hard if we want to win. Winning isn't that important to me. Then you shouldn't be on the team. The rest of the team takes this very seriously and wants to win. I apologize. I understand how important this is to everyone, and I won't miss another practice. Be sure not to, or we don't want you on the team. Substitutions. One. I'd like to know if I could turn in the book report late. I'd like to know if I could have more time to finish the book report. I'd like to know if I could get an extension. I'd like to know if I could have some extra time to complete the assignment. Two. I just procrastinated too much. I just wasted too much time. I just delayed starting. I just put it off too long. Three. Be honest. Tell the truth. Speak truthfully. Be straightforward with me. Four. I must admit that I'm very disappointed in you. I must admit that I expected better of you. I must admit that I feel like you let me down. I must admit that I think you could do better. Five. However, I'm going to have to take off some points. However, I'm going to have to reduce your grade. However, I'm going to have to penalize you. However, I'm going to have to bring down your score. Six. I guess it's my own fault. I have no one else to blame. It's my responsibility. It's all on my shoulders. Seven. Didn't I ask you to do the laundry? Didn't I ask you to clean your room? Didn't I ask you to wash the dishes? Didn't I ask you to vacuum the carpets? Eight. You have to remember your chores. You have to remember your jobs. You have to remember your responsibilities. You have to remember to help around the house. Nine. I have too much to do, and I really need your help. I have too much to do, and I depend on you. I have too much to do. And I need your assistance. I have too much to do, and I must have your support. 
10. Just don't forget again. Try to remember. Don't let it happen again. Don't make the same mistake twice. 11. Why weren't you at basketball practice? Why weren't you at band rehearsal? Why weren't you at choir practice? Why weren't you at softball practice? 12. Oh, I had a date. Oh, I had a meeting. Oh, I had an interview. Oh, I had a get-together. 13. Don't make such a fuss about one practice. Don't go on so about one practice. Don't make a scene about one practice. Don't hassle me so much about one practice. 14. You have no right to get on my case. You have no right to criticize me. You have no right to nag me. You have no right to pester me. 15. Be sure not to, or we don't want you on the team. See that it doesn't, or we don't want you on the team. Make sure, or we don't want you on the team. Be certain it doesn't, or we don't want you on the team. Monologue In many instances, reproach from one's peers can be a lot more effective than from someone in a position of power. Peer pressure can be a negative influence when it sways people to do things that are inappropriate or harmful to their health. One of the biggest causes for first-time drug and alcohol use is peer pressure. It can be incredibly difficult for a young person to stand out from the crowd and say that they do not want to do something. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes the desire for our peers to respect us can make us better people. This is especially so when a person feels like he has let down his peers when they were depending upon him. This is particularly the case when children play a team sport. Many parents encourage their children to play these kinds of sports because they feel that they can instill a sense of responsibility and duty to others. Jealousy Basic Patterns That girl thinks she is so cute. I wish I could afford a car like this. I have to admit, I'm a little jealous. I'm envious of his success. You have no reason to envy me. Are you jealous of my friend? I wish I could be as fast as Tom. He clearly makes Bill jealous. Jealousy can really hurt a friendship. It doesn't help to be envious of him. I can already tell that I won't like him. It sounds like you are jealous. I just don't like the idea of you spending so much time with that guy. No matter how much I study, I can't seem to beat you. 
I guess my envy makes me get carried away. Dialogue 1 Who is that guy with you? Oh, that's my new tutor. I thought your new tutor was going to be a girl. I thought so, too. But at the last minute, she had to cancel. She was good enough to recommend Peter to me. So, his name is Peter. Yes. He's been studying French for six years, so he's going to be able to help me improve my French a lot. How often are you going to be meeting with him? We're supposed to meet twice a week. Isn't that a lot? I don't think so. I really need help with my French if I want to study in France next summer. Don't you think you can find a better tutor? No, I already explained to you that he's very qualified. Plus, we get along well. How do you know that you get along well? We had a nice conversation. He's a very nice guy. Well, I don't like him. You don't know him. You haven't even spoken to him. I don't need to. I can already tell that I won't like him. It sounds like you're jealous. Why would you think that I'm jealous? Because Peter is very handsome and we will be spending lots of time alone together studying. So what if I'm jealous? I just don't like the idea of you spending so much time with that guy. He might try to make a move on you. You don't have to worry. He has a girlfriend that he cares about a lot. I still don't know if I trust him. Nevertheless, you can trust me because I would never cheat on you. Dialogue 2 What did you get on the test? I got a 95. How about you? 92. Not as high as you. Maybe next time you'll beat me. I don't think so. No matter how much I study, I can't seem to beat you. It's not that important. After all, we both got an A on the test, and we'll get an A for the course as well. But it's really annoying that you always get a higher score. It's not a contest. It's easy for you to say. You're always doing better than me. But you always do well. It's not fair. No matter how hard or long I study, I can never do better than you. We're friends. We shouldn't be competing against each other. We should be helping each other. You just don't know how I feel, because you aren't the one who's always getting a lower grade. It makes me uncomfortable when you talk like this. I don't care. I want to get a higher score than you just once. I think you're taking this too far. I'm sorry. I guess my envy makes me get carried away. I don't think this type of competition is good for our friendship. Maybe you're right. I shouldn't be so jealous of you and should try to enjoy my own accomplishments. Maybe we shouldn't discuss our scores with each other anymore. Dialogue 3 Annabelle, would you come wash the dinner dishes? Why do I have to do it? Because I said so. But Kara doesn't have to do the chores, too. Kara is five years younger than you. You are the oldest, and your mother and I expect you to help out. It's not fair. Yes, it is. When Kara is older, then she will have chores, too. I just want things to be more equal. How are things unequal? For example, on her birthday, she received more presents than I did. She may have gotten more presents, but that's because the one birthday present you received was as expensive as all her gifts combined. Your mother and I spent just as much on you as we did her. Last week, Kara drew in my favorite book, and she didn't get punished. Yes, she did. She had to go to her room for the rest of the day with no television. If I did the same to her, I would have been grounded for a week. 
That's because she's too young to really understand what she has done. When she's older, she'll get the same kinds of punishment as you. But it's not fair now. You get to do a lot of things that Kara doesn't get to do because you're older. Like what? For instance, you can go out with your friends by yourself. When Kara is with her friends, a parent must always be watching. That's not a big deal compared to the fact that Kara gets anything she wants because she's the baby. Do you really want to be treated exactly like Kara? Yes, children should be treated equally. Then you should start getting ready for bed soon. But it's only seven thirty. Kara's bedtime is eight p.m., and you said you wanted equal treatment. That's not what I meant. But you have to understand that you can't just take the good things. If you want to be treated the same, then you have to take the bad with the good. I see your point. I'll go do the dishes now. Substitutions. One. Who was that guy with you? Who were you with? Tell me about that guy. Why were you with him? Two. She was good enough to recommend Peter to me. She was kind enough to recommend Peter to me. She was considerate enough to recommend Peter to me. She was thoughtful enough to recommend Peter to me. Three. We had a nice conversation. We had a nice chat. We had a nice discussion. We had a nice talk. Four. It sounds like you are jealous. It sounds like you have been bitten by the green-eyed monster. It sounds like you are envious. It sounds like you are green with envy. Five. Because Peter is very handsome, and we will be spending lots of time alone together studying. Because Peter is very charming, and we will be spending lots of time alone together studying. Because Peter is very witty, and we will be spending lots of time alone together studying. Because Peter is very attractive, and we will be spending lots of time alone together studying. Six. Not as high as you. Lower than that. Not as good a grade. I didn't score as well. Seven. But it's really annoying that you always get a higher score. But it really gets to me that you always get a higher score. But it really bothers me that you always get a higher score. But it gets on my nerves that you always get a higher score. Eight. That's easy for you to say. You don't have to worry. It's no skin off your nose. It's not your problem. Nine. I guess my envy makes me get carried away. I guess my envy makes me take things too far. I guess my envy makes me go overboard. I guess my envy makes me go off the deep end. Ten. I shouldn't be so jealous of you, and should try to enjoy my own accomplishments. I shouldn't be so jealous of you, and should try to bask in my own glory. 
I shouldn't be so jealous of you and should try to appreciate what I have. I shouldn't be so jealous of you and should try to take pleasure in my own achievements. 11. Kara is five years younger than you. You are five years older than Kara. You are more mature. Kara is five years your junior. 12. She may have gotten more presents, but that's because the one birthday present you received was as expensive as all her gifts combined. She may have gotten more presents, but that's because the one birthday present you received was as expensive as all her gifts put together. She may have gotten more presents, but that's because the one birthday present you received was as expensive as all her gifts added up. She may have gotten more presents, but that's because the one birthday present you received was as expensive as all her gifts taken as a whole. 13. Last week, Kara drew in my favorite book and she didn't get punished. Last week, Kara tore my favorite shirt and she didn't get punished. Last week, Kara broke my favorite doll and she didn't get punished. Last week, Kara got my favorite dress dirty and she didn't get punished. 14. For instance, you can go out with your friends by yourself. For instance, you can go out with your friends without supervision. For instance, you can go out with your friends without a chaperone. For instance, you can go out with your friends without an adult. 15. That's not what I meant. That's not what I intended. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I sought after. Monologue Sibling rivalry is a common occurrence in families. America has a history of wanting everyone to be treated equally, and this has extended to family life. When colonists left England for a new home in America, they wanted some traditions to change. In England, legally, only the firstborn son would inherit the family property. America passed a law that got rid of this law and stated that all children could inherit. From this ideal and others of equality, Americans usually believe that all children should be loved and treated in the same way. Favoritism by parents can lead to emotional problems in their children once they grow up. Something that is commonly talked about in America is middle child syndrome. This is when a child who is neither the oldest nor the youngest doesn't feel special. The oldest and youngest are usually seen as receiving special privileges that middle children don't get. This can make them feel very insecure or very sensitive to the littlest of slights when they become adults. Flattery Basic Patterns You haven't aged one bit. That dress looks marvelous on you. Don't try to impress me with flattery. I'm not fooled by your false compliments. You played that piece wonderfully. You sing like an angel. He's the best ball player I have ever seen. You are our most valuable worker. 
We are very impressed with your work. You have the best yard in the neighborhood. You are just the person I was hoping to run into. Because your smile brightens up my day. Can't I just enjoy your company? I really like that dress you are wearing. I just wanted to let you know how well I think you are running the office. Dialogue 1 Hi, Audreen. You are just the person I was hoping to run into. Oh, why is that? Because your smile brightens up my day. Is that all? Isn't there another reason? Can I just enjoy your company? I guess so. I really like that dress you are wearing. I think it suits you well. That is nice of you to say so. Is it new? No, I've had it for many years. You've seen me wear it lots of times. Oh, that's right. Have you done something new with your hair? Nope. It's the same as it has always been. I just think it looks especially good today. Why are you flattering me so much today? I'm just trying to be nice to you. I'm still a little suspicious. Do you want something? Well, I was going to ask you if you have an extra ticket to the concert. Yes, I do. I was wondering if you have found someone who wants to go. Not yet. Would you like to go? Yes, I would. All you had to do was ask. You didn't have to try to butter me up first. Dialogue 2 Good morning, Mr. Addison. Good morning, Diana. How are you doing today? I am very well. And you? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Is there something that you wanted to discuss with me? Nothing in particular. I just wanted to let you know how well I think you are running the office. Thank you for the compliment. Since you've taken over, I think that the entire office is working more efficiently and effectively. That's nice of you to say. Our old manager didn't do half as good a job as you. Well, that is one of the reasons he had to be replaced. The president of the company felt that he was not working very hard. I can tell that you are a hard worker. I try to be. I've noticed that you are always working late into the night. It shows how dedicated you are to making sure the company succeeds. It is good of you to notice. I believe that not enough people are aware of all that you do around the office. Employees like you that take the time to let me know how I'm appreciated make up for that. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I've heard that someone in the office might be promoted. Is that true? Yes. Management is looking to advance someone in the office who deserves it. Who will pick the person to get promoted? The president has left the decision up to me. That's wonderful. Have you made a decision yet? Not yet, but I'll let everyone know by the end of this week. I hope that you will keep me in mind. I definitely will. Thank you, sir. Have a nice afternoon. Dialogue 3 You look absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. You must have taken a long time to get ready for the prom. I spent all day getting ready. That dress is lovely. Did it take you a long time to pick it out? It took me ages. I wanted to make sure that it was the perfect dress, so I took my time and didn't just buy the first dress I saw. I think you chose wisely. The color suits you. This shade of green is my favorite color. I've always thought that green goes well with your shade of red hair. 
I've always been jealous of your hair. It's so long and curly. But I've always liked your hair. It's so smooth and straight. Thanks for saying that. Did you go to the hairdresser to fix your hair? Yes. Do you like it? I do. I think wearing your hair up is very chic. I thought so too. I saw this hairstyle in a magazine on a movie star. I liked it so much that I took the picture into the hairdresser and had her copy it. I think it turned out well. Who did your makeup? My older sister. She did a very good job. I think it looks natural and not overdone like a lot of girls I see. I hate it when girls wear too much makeup. It makes them look like clowns. Anyway, I hope you have fun at the prom. You too. Substitutions. One. Because your smile brightens up my day. Because your smile makes me happy. Because your smile makes my day. Because your smile always cheers me up. Two. Can't I just enjoy your company? I just like being around you. Your presence is enough. I don't need another reason other than I enjoy your company. Three. I think it suits you well. I think it matches your personality. I think it goes well with your hair. I think it fits you. Four. That is nice of you to say so. Thank you for saying so. It's nice of you to tell me. I appreciate the compliment. Five. Have you done something new with your hair? Did you change your hairstyle? Have you cut your hair? Is that a new hairstyle? Six. All you had to do was ask. You only had to be straightforward. You should have just gotten directly to the point. You didn't have to beat around the bush. Seven. You didn't have to try to butter me up first. You didn't have to try to flatter me first. You didn't have to try to compliment me first. You didn't have to try to say nice things about me first. Eight. Nothing in particular. Nothing specific. I didn't have anything in mind. I don't have anything concrete to discuss. Nine. Since you've taken over, I think that the entire office is working more efficiently and effectively. Since you've taken charge, I think that the entire office is working more efficiently and effectively. Since you've taken leadership, I think that the entire office is working more efficiently and effectively. Since you've taken the reins, I think that the entire office is working more efficiently and effectively. Ten. It is good of you to notice. It is good of you to say something. 
It is good of you to point it out. It is good of you to let me know you are aware of it. 11. Is that true? Can you confirm that? Is there truth to the rumor? Is that right? 12. I spent all day getting ready. I spent all day preparing. I spent all day dressing up. I spent all day trying to look my best. 13. That dress is lovely. That hairstyle is lovely. That outfit is lovely. That blouse is lovely. 14. It's so long and curly. It's so short and smooth. It's so thick and wavy. It's so shiny and neat. 15. I think it turned out well. I think she did a good job. I think she copied it perfectly. I think it looks exactly like the picture. Monologue Flattery is often very nice to hear, but at times it is not welcomed. Genuine compliments are always appreciated. Genuine compliments are ones that a person truly means. These comments should be expressed, but not too excessively. Excessive flattery tends to make Americans suspicious that the person giving the compliments is either insincere or wants something. It is enough to say that someone looks beautiful just once. If you are gushing or overflowing with praise, it tends to make you appear as if your comments don't mean much because you are quite free with them. For instance, if you constantly say everything is lovely, then people might not believe that you feel that they are especially lovely if that is a common phrase for you. Compliments given to the opposite sex should also be in moderation. If you are a man and would like to compliment that your friend's date looks very attractive, you can say this once or twice. Any more would probably offend your friend because it would feel like you were paying too much attention to his companion. Finally, compliments should be given without any expectation of something in return. Numerous admiring comments to an employer would not be appreciated because it would look like you were kissing up to him or her. Kissing up is when someone gives false praise to another in order to get something. This is a quality much detested by Americans. Shame Basic Patterns You should be ashamed of yourself. His behavior was shameful. He has disgraced his entire family. She is a disgrace to her country. I feel very ashamed for what I did. I want to apologize for the shame I have brought on this school. He blushed with shame. That man has no shame. He couldn't hide his embarrassment. His shame was evident to everyone. I lied to my parents, and now I feel very guilty. I feel so ashamed of myself. I can't believe I fell flat on my face at the recital. 
I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. I don't think I can face my friends and family. Dialogue 1 Hi, Sean. Hello, Megan. Why do you look so upset? I did something that I shouldn't have done. What did you do? I lied to my parents, and now I feel very guilty. What did you lie about? I told them I was going to the library to study, but in reality, I actually went to the arcade to play video games. It's not good to lie to your parents, but that doesn't sound too bad. You don't understand. What don't I understand? I shouldn't have gone to the arcade, because they needed my help. What should you have been helping with? My dad needed my help to fix the roof. That's why I had to lie. They would have insisted that I help if all I wanted to do was go to the arcade. So instead you told them that you had to go study? Yes. I told them I had a big test to study for, so I had to go to the library. I swore that there was no other time for me to go to the library. It was just a little white lie. It was more than that. My father broke his arm while trying to fix the roof by himself. Oh my God! Is he okay? He'll be fine. The cast on his arm should come off in three weeks, but I still feel horrible. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You didn't know what would happen. I still can't shake the feeling that I could have prevented his injury if I was there. I feel so ashamed of myself. You should concentrate on helping around the house now. Your guilt can't change the past. Dialogue 2 I can't believe I fell flat on my face at the recital. It wasn't that bad. Yes, it was. I completely forgot the piece I was playing. I didn't even finish. Everyone makes mistakes. I should have been better. I'm sure you did the best you could. But I didn't. What do you mean? I should have practiced the piano more. But your piano teacher said that you've been practicing an hour every day. That's more than enough. I know. That's what I told him. But it's not the truth. Why did you lie to him? I haven't been practicing, but I didn't want to get into trouble. So I lied and said that I practiced every day. What have you been doing instead? I've just been fooling around. Then I guess you have no one to blame but yourself. I know. I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. My grandparents made a special trip here to see me play the piano. Did they have to travel far? Three hours by train. That is a long way to come. They were expecting to be so proud of me. I'm sure that I've let them down. I'm certain that it doesn't matter to them. I don't think I can face my friends and family. I'm so humiliated. You can't hide all night, so you might as well get it over with. Dialogue 3 What's up, Ted? I'm not feeling so hot. What's wrong? I've done something that I'm not very proud of. What did you do? I stole something. I can't believe you would do something like that. I know. I'm pretty ashamed of myself. What did you steal? A comic book from the bookstore. What came over you? I don't know. I just really wanted the comic book. That is so unlike you. This is not my proudest moment. Did you get caught? No. The manager was busy with another customer, so I got away with it. I think that you should return it and apologize. But I will get into trouble. My parents will be furious. I still think you should. The comic book isn't worth much. The bookstore will probably never miss it. What about your conscience? So I'm feeling a little guilty. I'll get over it. I don't think you will. Your conscience will eat at you until you finally make amends. You're probably right. 
If I turn myself in, maybe they'll go easy on me. Substitutions 1. I lied to my parents, and now I feel very guilt-ridden. I lied to my parents, and now I feel very sorry. I lied to my parents, and now I feel very remorseful. I lied to my parents, and now I feel very repentant. 2. I told them I was going to the library to study, but in reality, I actually went to the arcade to play video games. I told them I was going to the library to study, but in truth, I actually went to the arcade to play video games. I told them I was going to the library to study, but actually, I went to the arcade to play video games. I told them I was going to the library to study, but in fact, I actually went to the arcade to play video games. 3. I swore that there was no other time for me to go to the library. I maintained that there was no other time for me to go to the library. I insisted that there was no other time for me to go to the library. I claimed that there was no other time for me to go to the library. 4. It was just a little white lie. It was just a tiny untruth. It was just a fib. It was just a trivial falsehood. 5. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. You shouldn't blame yourself. You shouldn't punish yourself. You shouldn't condemn yourself. 6. I can't believe I fell flat on my face at the recital. I can't believe I failed at the recital. I can't believe I embarrassed myself at the recital. I can't believe I bombed at the recital. 7. Everyone makes mistakes. No one is perfect. We all slip up sometimes. We are only human. 8. I should have practiced the piano more. I should have practiced the violin more. I should have practiced the cello more. I should have practiced the trumpet more. 9. I've just been fooling around. I've just been goofing off. I've just been playing around. I've just been messing about. 10. I don't think I can face my friends and family. I don't think I can meet the eyes of my friends and family. I don't think I can confront my friends and family. I don't think I can cope with my friends and family. 11. I've done something that I'm not very proud of. I've done something that I am ashamed of. I've done something that I can't face. I've done something that I can't live up to. 12. I stole some to me. I shoplifted. 
I committed a crime. 13. What came over you? What possessed you to do such a thing? How do you excuse this? What can you say to explain your actions? 14. That is so unlike you. That is so out of character for you. That is not like you. That is not how you normally behave. 15. Monologue. Guilt and shame can be very powerful emotions. They prevent people from acting in socially unacceptable ways. This can especially be seen when people confess, even though they have no chance of being caught. Americans sometimes call this their conscience kicking in. A conscience is the part of a person's mind that can tell the difference between right and wrong. Sometimes, people don't always listen to their conscience because of other factors, like extreme desire for something one cannot afford. They may be able to get away with their offense without being caught. However, they cannot escape their conscience. Once, when he was eight years old, he stole some candy from a local store. No one saw him, and he got away with his crime completely. However, the values taught to him by his parents wouldn't let him eat the candy. He felt so guilty that he took something that didn't belong to him that he returned the candy to the store a week later and apologized. No person made him do this. It was simply his conscience reminding him of his shame. Ridicule Basic Patterns He's always making mistakes. Does she always dress that badly? You are such an idiot. What you are saying is ridiculous. His argument is nonsense. He is an awful actor. That is the most stupid thing I have ever heard. He is the worst worker here. This poem is awful. Your music is hurting my ears. Then why was everyone laughing at me? They were having fun at my expense. I don't like the embarrassment then that's too bad, because I'm never going to put myself through that ordeal again. Last week, I did something really dumb, and everyone laughed. Dialogue 1 I can't believe I did so badly. It wasn't that bad. Yes, it was. Everyone was laughing at me. People can be stupid. Forget them. I'm just so embarrassed. I'll never do it again. It's just for fun. When people do karaoke, no one expects a professional. But I wasn't even passably good. You were fine. I could make a screeching cat sound good. You're being too dramatic. Then why was everyone laughing at me? They weren't all laughing at you. They were laughing because they were having fun. They were having fun at my expense. I think you're wrong. Well, I don't care. I'm still never going to sing in public again. The only important thing is to have fun when doing karaoke. I don't like the embarrassment. Next time, I'll just watch from the audience. But it's more fun to participate. You're going to miss out. 
then that's too bad because I'm never going to put myself through that ordeal again. I think you will regret it. Dialogue two. How was class today? Terrible. I never want to go back. What happened that was so bad? The whole class laughed at me. I can't stand them. Why did they laugh? The teacher called on me to answer a question, but I didn't know the answer. So they laughed at you for that? No, I didn't know the answer. But the teacher insisted that I try to give an answer, so I guessed. I ended up giving the wrong answer. The class was wrong to laugh. Did their teacher make them stop? Yes, but after the class, they still made fun of me. They all said it was an easy question, and only someone who was retarded would get it wrong. What was the question? She asked me, "What is the capital of our state?" What did you say? I said the capital was Baltimore. That's a good guess, since it is the largest city in Maryland. The class didn't think it was a good guess. Everyone thought I was stupid because I didn't know that the capital of Maryland is Annapolis. They said everyone should know the capital of their own state. Well, now you know. I wish I knew before. Now everyone calls me dummy. Don't worry about it. They'll all forget by the time you go back to school tomorrow. I hope so. Dialogue three. Are you going to tonight's volleyball game? No, I've decided not to play anymore. Why not? I'd rather not say. Come on, I'm your best friend. Okay, but only because we're best friends. So go on. Last week I did something really dumb, and everyone laughed. The people watching, the other team, and even my own team went into hysterics. Oh, those things happen. You can't take it to heart. I do. Don't be so sensitive. You weren't there, so you don't know. Try to explain it to me. Well, I went to make a shot, but instead I hit the ball backwards off the court. That could happen to anyone. But then the ball smashed into a window in the gym and broke it. You must admit that is kind of funny. No, it's not. I turned beet red. Have a sense of humor. I don't think I can get over it. The first step to overcoming your embarrassment is to come play again. I'll consider it. Substitutions. One. Everyone was laughing at me. Everyone was making fun of me. Everyone was ridiculing me. Everyone was mocking me. Two. People can be stupid. People can be insensitive. People can be thoughtless. People can be inconsiderate. Three. I could make a screeching cat sound good. I could make a howling dog sound good. I could make a screaming child sound good. I could make nails scraping a chalkboard sound good. Four. I'm still never going to sing in public again. I'm still never going to sing on stage again. I'm still never going to sing in front of people again. I'm still never going to sing for a crowd again. 
Five. You are going to miss out. You are not going to have fun in life that way. You are not going to live life to the fullest. You are not going to experience all you can. Six. I never want to go back. I can't show my face there. I can't face those people. I won't go through that again. Seven. No, I didn't know the answer, but the teacher insisted that I try to give an answer, so I guessed. No, I didn't know the answer, but the teacher insisted that I try to give an answer, so I took a long shot. No, I didn't know the answer, but the teacher insisted that I try to give an answer, so I made a wild guess. No, I didn't know the answer, but the teacher insisted that I try to give an answer, so I made an attempt. Eight. They all said it was an easy question, and only someone who was retarded would get it wrong. They all said it was an easy question, and only someone who was slow would get it wrong. They all said it was an easy question, and only someone who was an imbecile would get it wrong. They all said it was an easy question, and only someone who was an idiot would get it wrong. Nine. They'll all forget by the time you go back to school tomorrow. They'll all move on to something else by the time you go back to school tomorrow. They all won't even remember what happened by the time you go back to school tomorrow. They'll all be laughing at someone else's mistake by the time you go back to school tomorrow. Ten. I'd rather not say. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to talk about it. It's not up for discussion. Monologue. Americans appreciate those who can let ridicule slide off their backs. The idiom "slide off their back" means that it doesn't let something affect or bother them. No one likes being made fun of, but people who react very badly to it, such as storming off or crying, tend to lose respect in the eyes of many Americans. According to ideal stereotypes that many Americans have, the butt or victim of the laughter should either pretend not to care. Or be able to find the humor in the situation and fall down laughing with everyone else. For instance, April 1st is April Fool's Day in the U.S. People usually play funny pranks on others on this day. This is considered to be fun, unless the joke or prank causes harm or is done with malice. People expect the target of the joke to be able to laugh at himself or herself. Those that cannot are judged to have a poor sense of humor. And an inability to have fun. Unforgettable experiences. Basic patterns. I once met the president. Swimming with dolphins was unforgettable. I almost drowned when I was a boy. Last year, I went to the Great Wall. I'll never forget the day I met my husband. This is the most memorable day of my life. You only graduate from college once. Esther is a truly unforgettable person. How can I forget the day my child was born? I can't forget how much you have done for me. 
The one thing that I will never forget is swimming with the dolphins. It was an unbelievable experience. I made sure that I took lots of pictures so I can always remember my trip. I wanted to capture every last detail. I want to be able to share this memorable experience with everyone I care about. Dialogue 1 What did you do over vacation? I went to New Zealand for the holiday. Wow, I wish I had gone there. You should go sometime because it's a lovely country. What is it like? The country is made up of two islands. It's very lush and green because it rains a lot there. What did you do while you were there? I did a lot of different things, too many to explain. What was your favorite? The one thing that I will never forget is swimming with the dolphins. That sounds really interesting. How did you do it? First you have to put on a wetsuit because the water is rather chilly. Then you get into a very large pool where you can swim with the dolphins. Was it expensive? A little steep, but worth every penny. Is it very dangerous? No, the dolphins are very gentle. Did you know scientists believe they are smarter than dogs? I wasn't aware of that. You mean that you can actually swim with them without anything between you and them? Nothing between us at all. I even got to touch the dolphins. What was it like? At first, I was only brave enough to pet them with my hand, but then I got braver and held on to one's fin while it took me for a swim. You actually held on to the dolphin while it was swimming? Yes, we moved very quickly and gracefully through the water. It was unforgettable. I can't even imagine how that would feel. You really had to be there. Dialogue 2 where did you go on your lunch break? I went to pick up my film. May I see your pictures? Sure. What are they of? My trip to Pompeii. Ooh, when did you go? This past summer. Did you enjoy it? It was an unbelievable experience. Tell me about it. Pompeii is an ancient city in Italy that was buried by volcanic ash when the local volcano, Mount Vesuvius, erupted. Why is it so amazing? Lots of cities have been destroyed by volcanoes. This city is so amazing because the ash from the volcano perfectly preserved everything in the town. Even the people who died? Even the people. It has allowed archaeologists to study how the people lived back then. They have carefully uncovered the city for study. It sounds like an important discovery. It is. Because the people were completely surprised by the volcano, they were trapped doing everyday things, such as cooking and selling goods in the market. It is not often that archaeologists can study the lives of the common people. Why is that? Usually nothing survives from them, because only the objects and writings of the rich and powerful are studied and preserved. This all sounds fascinating. I made sure that I took lots of pictures so I can always remember my trip. How many rolls did you take? Ten. Whoa, that's a lot. Like I said, I wanted to capture every last detail. Dialogue 3 Are you up to anything? No, why? Want to run some errands with me? Sure. What do you need to do? First, I need to make sure to pick up my dry cleaning. Why is it so important? Because it's the dress I want to wear to graduation. Oh, then we need to make certain we get that done. Also, I have to go to the mall. What do you have to pick up at the mall? I need to buy a camera. Don't you have a camera? No, I recently lost it. Do you think it will be very expensive? 
Yes, because I want to buy a new digital camera, not just a regular 35mm one. Why spend so much extra money? I want to be able to send pictures of my graduation to my entire family. Why not just mail them pictures? If I mail them photos, I have to go to the extra trouble of making duplicate copies, buying stamps, and addressing envelopes. I'm too lazy to do all that. What's easier with a digital camera? A digital camera will let me just email photos to all my friends and family. It's much easier to send emails than the other way. It does sound more convenient. Also, some of my loved ones live very far away, and postage could be very expensive. I guess a digital camera is a good buy. I want to be able to share this memorable experience with everyone I care about. Substitutions 1. I wish I had gone there. I've always wanted to go there. It's on my list of places to visit. I really want to see it. 2. What did you do while you were there? What activities did you do? How did you spend your time? How did you pass the time? 3. I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know that. That's news to me. That's the first time I've heard of that. 4. I can't even imagine how that would feel. I can't even put myself in your place. I can't even think about doing the same thing you did. I can't even picture myself doing that. 5. You really had to be there. You have to experience it yourself. You have to do it firsthand to understand. Words can't express the feeling. 6. Why is it so amazing? Why is it so unique? Why is it so exceptional? Why is it so special? 7. This city is so amazing because the ash from the volcano perfectly preserved everything in the town. This city is so amazing because the ash from the volcano saved everything in the town. This city is so amazing because the ash from the volcano kept intact everything in the town. This city is so amazing because the ash from the volcano prevented the deterioration of everything in the town. 8. It has allowed archaeologists to study how the people lived back then. It has allowed archaeologists to study how the people lived in that period. It has allowed archaeologists to study how the people lived during that age. It has allowed archaeologists to study how the people lived long ago. 9. It sounds like an important discovery. It sounds like an historic discovery. It sounds like a landmark discovery. It sounds like a groundbreaking discovery. 10. 
I wanted to capture every last detail. I don't want to forget anything. I want to remember every moment. I want to document everything. 11. Oh, then we need to make certain we get that done. Oh, then we need to make certain we cross that off our list. Oh, then we need to make certain we accomplish that task. Oh, then we need to make certain we make that a top priority. 12. What do you have to pick up at the mall? What do you have to buy at the mall? What do you have to find at the mall? What do you have to get your hands on at the mall? 13. No, I recently lost it. No, it recently vanished. No, it is nowhere to be found. No, I misplaced it. 14. It does sound more convenient. It sounds like it will come in handy. It will make things easier. It sounds like a practical purchase. 15. I want to be able to share this memorable experience with everyone I care about. I want to be able to share this landmark moment with everyone I care about. I want to be able to share this milestone in my life with everyone I care about. I want to be able to share this significant event with everyone I care about. Monologue the dolphin is a favorite animal among most Americans. Their intelligence and charm have captured the hearts of many people who flock to zoos and aquariums that have them. Places like SeaWorld, a popular Florida attraction that specializes in marine animals, make a fortune off people's love of dolphins. Their high intelligence can easily be seen in all the tricks they can learn to perform. Scientists even believe the dolphins have a highly developed system of communication not yet fully understood by humans. They are seen as kind and gentle animals because there are many tales of dolphins saving sailors lost at sea. In spite of these wonderful characteristics, not everyone appreciates dolphins. Fishermen are in direct competition with dolphins for fish, especially tuna. Every year, dolphins are killed in tuna nets. Nevertheless, this animal's popularity can be seen by people who insist on buying dolphin-safe tuna, tuna fish that is caught without any harm to dolphins, and the growing number of attractions featuring them, especially ones that allow people to swim with them. Sweet Memories Basic Patterns Do you remember how the flowers used to smell on our farm? You were wearing the blue dress on our first date. I loved to sit under that oak tree as a child. Some of my best memories are from college. These pictures bring back some great memories. 
fresh grass always reminds me of childhood summers. I love New York in the summer. I can't forget the way her hair smelled. That reminds me of my first dog. I still like thinking about my first girlfriend. Pictures are nice, but I don't need any reminders for such a milestone in our lives. There have been many other moments since we've become parents that I will remember just as much. It's a very significant moment in your life. One of the best memories I have of him was when I first got him. Dialogue 1 Can you believe that Cassie is almost five years old? It seems like just yesterday that we brought her home from the hospital. Do you remember the night she was born? Of course. How could I forget? We were so nervous that night. We had good reason. There was so much traffic that I didn't think we'd make it to the hospital on time. I must admit that I was worried that I might have the baby in the car on the way. We made it in the nick of time. Even though it was stressful then, it's good we can laugh about it now. Looking back on it, I can see the humor, but at the moment I couldn't imagine ever finding it funny. But having a baby to bring home made it all worth it. It was really good of our families to welcome us home when we brought Cassie home from the hospital. I was so happy to see our loved ones waiting with balloons and presents for Cassie. I remember that everyone took so many pictures that day. It was very nice of your mother to put some of those pictures together in an album. Did you save it? Of course I did. I want Cassie to have a keepsake of her first day at home. I've put it in a safe place until she's old enough to appreciate it. Pictures are nice, but I don't need any reminders for such a milestone in our lives. Yes, there are just some things that people will always hold dear. There have been many other moments since we've become parents that I will remember just as much. And there are sure to be more to come. Dialogue 2 I hear that you have an anniversary coming up. That's right, at the end of the month. How long have you been married? Five years. Did you know each other long before you got married? We dated a little over two years before we got married. How did you two meet? We met in college. I'll never forget the day we met. I don't doubt that. It's a very significant moment in your life. Give me some details. I was a junior in college, and we had just begun the new school year when I ran into him. What exactly brought you together? Well, I was sitting under a tree reading a book when a guy came up and asked me where the library was located. And that guy is now your husband. You guessed right. He came up and explained to me that he was a new transfer student and he didn't know his way around the campus. What happened next? I offered to show him where the library was, and he took me to lunch as a way to say thank you. That is such a sweet story. Later, he confessed to me that he really did know where the library was, but he just used that as an excuse to introduce himself to me. He said that he saw me under the tree and just had to meet me. So, it was love at first sight for him. That's what he says. You must never get tired of telling that story because it's so wonderful. I tell it as often as I get a chance to because I love it so much. Dialogue 3 Isn't this a cute picture of a puppy? Yes, it is. He reminds me of my first dog. What was his name? Gus. Why does this picture remind you of him? The puppy in the photo looks a bit like him. What happened to Gus? He died. 
Oh, I'm very sorry. It's all right. It happened many years ago. I'm sure you have many good memories of him. I do. We used to do everything together. Tell me some stories about him. One of the best memories I have of him was when I first got him. How did you get him? I was ten and had been pestering my parents for a dog for years. Why wouldn't they get you a dog? They told me I was too young to take care of a puppy. What made them change their minds? Maybe because I had gotten older, or they couldn't resist how much I wanted a puppy. I'm not sure. How did they give him to you? One day I came home from school, and my parents said they had a surprise for me, and it was waiting for me in my room. What did you do then? I ran up the stairs to my room and threw open the door. What did you find? There was a tiny puppy with a big red bow around his neck at the foot of my bed. Oh, how cute! What was he doing? Actually, nothing. He was fast asleep. For the rest of his life, he slept on the exact same spot at the end of my bed every night. That's a great childhood memory. Substitutions. One. Of course, how could I forget? Of course, it's burned in my memory. Of course, it was a memorable experience. Of course, it can't be wiped from my mind. Two. We made it in the nick of time. We barely made it. We didn't leave any time to spare. It was a close call. Three. I want Cassie to have a keepsake of her first day at home. I want Cassie to have a memento of her first day at home. I want Cassie to have a reminder of her first day at home. I want Cassie to have a souvenir of her first day at home. Four. I've put it in a safe place until she's old enough to appreciate it. I have it in safekeeping until she's old enough to appreciate it. I've stored it away until she's old enough to appreciate it. I've locked it away until she's old enough to appreciate it. Five. Yes, there are just some things that people will always hold dear. Yes, there are just some things that people will always keep close to their heart. Yes, there are just some things that people will always treasure. Yes, there are just some things that people will always look back on fondly. Six. I hear that you have an anniversary coming up. I hear that you have an anniversary in the near future. I hear that you have an anniversary in a little while. I hear that you have an anniversary in next to no time. Seven. We met in college. We met at a restaurant. We met in a bar. We met at work. Eight. Well, I was sitting under a tree reading a book when a guy came up and asked me where the library was located. Well, I was sitting under a tree working on a paper when a guy came up and asked me where the library was located. Well, 
I was sitting under a tree listening to music when a guy came up and asked me where the library was located. Well, I was sitting under a tree flipping through a magazine when a guy came up and asked me where the library was located. 9. You guessed right. You hit the nail on the head. Exactly. That's correct. 10. I tell it as often as I get a chance to because I love it so much. I tell it as much as I can because I love it so much. I tell it as many times as people will let me because I love it so much. I tell it to anyone who will listen because I love it so much. 11. What happened to Gus? Where is Gus now? What's Gus doing now? Is Gus doing well? 12. One of the best memories I have of him was when I first got him. One of the fondest memories I have of him was when I first got him. One of the happiest memories I have of him was when I first got him. One of the most warm-hearted memories I have of him was when I first got him. 13. I was 10 and had been pestering my parents for a dog for years. I was 10 and had been nagging my parents for a dog for years. I was 10 and had been begging my parents for a dog for years. I was 10 and had been pleading with my parents for a dog for years. 14. Why wouldn't they get you a dog? Why wouldn't they let you have a dog? Why wouldn't they allow you to keep a dog? Why wouldn't they give their permission for you to have a dog? 15. They told me I was too young to take care of a puppy. They told me I was too irresponsible to take care of a puppy. They told me I was too immature to take care of a puppy. They told me I was too careless to take care of a puppy. Monologue Taking pictures as a way to remember events, people, places, and things is very common. One of the problems with taking so many pictures is that people tend to forget the exact details of what is in the picture. In very old pictures, there might not be anyone who remembers why it was taken or the people, event, or place it depicts. Thus, it is best to try to find a way to record relevant information that one would want to know about a picture. One way is to write down a description of the picture, a date, and place on the back of each photo. Another way is to place the pictures in an organized album or scrapbook. A very common kind of album that Americans like to keep is a baby book. A baby book or album records the early years of a person's development. It is usually kept by a parent, grandparent, or someone else with a very close relationship to the child. It usually records memorable firsts, such as the first smile, first steps, first words, and first birthday. It can include pictures and special mementos, like, for instance, the baby's hospital ID bracelet.
memorable people. Basic patterns. Jeff was the funniest guy in our class. The whole town thought Jim was a good mayor. I'm glad to see that you still remember me. How could I forget my favorite college professor? Alfred was the tallest guy in our school. Hector was the worst employer I ever had. Our nation owes a lot to Martin Luther King Jr. Susan was the prettiest girl in our town. Karen had a beautiful singing voice. He helped many people in his long career. Have you kept in touch with many of your old classmates? There is one person I'm positive I'll recognize. Nevertheless, she is someone I'll never forget. This autograph is worth a lot because he's such a memorable figure in baseball and African American history. His courage won't be forgotten. Dialogue 1. I'm so excited. Why are you so excited? Tomorrow is my class reunion. Your class reunion for what? My high school graduating class. Have you kept in touch with many of your old classmates? Not really. It's been very difficult to stay in touch because I've moved around a lot since graduation. That's a shame. How long has it been since you've seen these people? Since graduation day. And when was that? Ten years ago. This is my ten-year class reunion. It's been a long time. Do you think you'll remember everyone? No, but there is one person I'm positive I'll recognize. Who is that? Patricia. Why her? Because she was my best friend and a big part of my high school experience. We did everything together. What kinds of things did you do together? We did cheerleading, field hockey, chorus, and lots of other things. Sounds like you were close. We were just like sisters. Why didn't you stay friends? The distance between us made it too difficult. She went to college in California, and I went to college in New York. That's a shame. Nevertheless, she is someone I'll never forget. I hope she will be at the reunion because I'm really looking forward to seeing her. Dialogue 2 What are you doing, Jake? I'm organizing my autograph collection. I didn't know that you were into collecting autographs. I've done it since I was a kid. Who do you collect autographs from? Lots of different kinds of people. Almost anyone who is famous. Give me some examples. I have autographs from movie stars, television personalities, sports stars, and politicians. Which one's your favorite? My favorite is an autographed baseball signed by Jackie Robinson. Who's Jackie Robinson? I can't believe that you don't know who Jackie Robinson is. He's famous. I'm sorry, but I don't keep up with sports. Jackie Robinson was the first black man to play professional baseball. But there are lots of black baseball players now. Why couldn't they play before? Because people were very prejudiced, and professional baseball players had to be white. Jackie Robinson was the first man to challenge that discrimination. He must have been very courageous. He was. Lots of people hated him, and he even got death threats. That's amazing. Now people must really admire him. Yes, that's why I was so determined to get his autograph. Where do you keep it? 
in a locked case to make sure it is safe. This autograph is worth a lot because he's such a memorable figure in baseball and African American history. How could you afford it? I had to save up a lot of money and also sell off some of my other autographs, but it was worth it because he's one of my heroes. Dialogue 3 Would you do me a favor? Ask away. Would you mail a letter for me tomorrow? I'd like to, but I can't. Why not? Because tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and all the post offices will be closed. Oh, I forgot about that. I'd be happy to mail it for you the next day. That's okay. I'll be able to do it then. Martin Luther King Jr. has always been a hero of mine. Me too, but I think almost everyone in the country knows what an important figure he was. Yes, it took a lot of courage to be a leader in the Civil Rights Movement. It takes a special kind of person to stand up for what they believe in. Equal rights for everyone meant a lot to him. He was very strong to stand up against prejudice, even though people threatened both him and his family. Did you know that some hateful people even threatened to kill his children if he didn't back down? I've heard that. I think his greatest contribution was to advocate peaceful protests and demonstrations. He maintained that love and respect would overcome hate and prejudice. He was also a magnificent speaker. Everyone said how powerful his voice was, and it could really move people. It was horrible when he died. I can't believe that someone could be so full of hate as to shoot him. That was a defining moment in American history, because we lost one of our great leaders too early. I don't think this country should ever forget his contribution. His courage won't be forgotten. That's why we celebrate his birthday as a national holiday. Substitutions 1. Have you kept in touch with many of your old classmates? Have you kept in contact with many of your old classmates? Have you stayed up to date with many of your old classmates? Have you remained friends with many of your old classmates? 2. It's been very difficult to stay in touch because I've moved around a lot since graduation. It's been very difficult to stay in touch because I don't know how to contact them. It's been very difficult to stay in touch because lots of them have moved away. It's been very difficult to stay in touch because I've lost their phone numbers. 3. How long has it been since you've seen these people? When did you last see these people? Has it been long since you saw them? Can you recall the last time you saw them? 4. No, but there is one person I'm positive I'll recognize. No but there is one person I'm positive I'll know. No, but there is one person I'm positive I'll make out. No, but there is one person I'm positive I'll identify. 5. Sounds like you were close. Sounds like you were devoted to each other. Sounds like you knew each other well. Sounds like you couldn't be separated. 6. We were just like sisters. We were like two peas in a pod. As close as two people can be. It was like we shared one brain. 7. 
I didn't know that you were into collecting autographs. I didn't know that you were interested in collecting autographs. I didn't know that you were drawn to collecting autographs. I didn't know that your hobby was collecting autographs. 8. Give me some examples. What, for instance? Like who? Anyone I would know? 9. I'm sorry, but I don't keep up with sports. I'm sorry, but I don't know much about sports. I'm sorry, but I don't read up on sports. I'm sorry, but I don't think much about sports. 10. Jackie Robinson was the first man to challenge that discrimination. Jackie Robinson was the first man to challenge that prejudice. Jackie Robinson was the first man to challenge that inequality. Jackie Robinson was the first man to challenge that bigotry. 11. In a locked case, to make sure it is safe. In a locked case, to make sure it is protected. In a locked case, to make sure it is out of harm's reach. In a locked case, to make sure it is beyond danger. 12. Ask away. Feel free. Don't hesitate. Don't think twice about it. 13. Martin Luther King Jr. has always been a hero of mine. Martin Luther King Jr. has always been an idol to me. Martin Luther King Jr. has always been someone I respect. Martin Luther King Jr. has always been the man I admire the most. 14. It takes a special kind of person to stand up for what they believe in. It takes a special kind of person to stand up for their convictions. It takes a special kind of person to stand up for their principles. It takes a special kind of person to stand up for what they think is right. 15. That was a defining moment in American history because we lost one of our great leaders too early. That was a defining moment in American history because we lost one of our great leaders prematurely. That was a defining moment in American history because we lost one of our great leaders before his time. That was a defining moment in American history because we lost one of our great leaders when we needed him most. Monologue Martin Luther King Jr. is a very important figure in American history. In addition to being a minister, he was a major leader of the Civil Rights Movement. The Civil Rights Movement was an organized action by African Americans in the 1950s and 1960s to petition for equal rights. Up until that time, legalized discrimination forced them to go to separate schools from whites and even made them sit in the back of trains and buses. It was even illegal for blacks to use the same public restrooms and water fountains as white people. The Civil Rights Movement sought to change all this and give blacks equal treatment under the law. King advocated nonviolent means of protest against injustice, such as peaceful demonstrations like marches and sit-ins. A sit-in was an organized effort where blacks would sit in restaurants that refused to serve black people. They wouldn't damage anything or attack anyone. They would just peacefully remain in silent protest. King was seen as such a strong leader that those prejudiced people who wanted to stop the civil rights movement targeted him. 
he received numerous death threats against himself and his family, and the church he preached at was bombed. None of these things deterred him. Finally, in 1968, King paid the ultimate sacrifice to his cause when a man assassinated him. For all his efforts and wisdom, Americans celebrate his birthday as a national holiday to remember the man and all that he stood for. Ecstatic Experiences Basic Patterns I love my new job. That surprise birthday party was great. This balloon ride is incredible. Our trip to the mountain was amazing. My first time scuba diving was unforgettable. Tasting this chocolate is pure ecstasy. Parachuting gives me an incredible rush. It's not safe, but I love driving fast. My greatest thrill is going on the roller coaster. I love the way these sheets feel wrapped around me. I can't believe this is really happening. You'll probably feel differently when some of the excitement has passed. I didn't think I would get it, but I did. I do, but right now I'm so excited that nothing could rain on my parade. Why are you so worked up? Dialogue 1 Kelsey, would you go check the mailbox? I'm too nervous to. Why? Because there might be a college rejection letter. But there might also be a college acceptance letter. I suppose you're right. Kelsey goes out and comes back in with the mail. Is there anything from any colleges? One letter. Where is it from? Yale. Isn't that your first choice school? Yes. Why haven't you opened it? I'm too excited. Well, nothing's going to get solved by just standing there and holding it. All right, here goes. Well, what does it say? It says I got in. Congratulations! I can't believe this is really happening. I got into my first choice. Kelsey, calm down. I can't calm down. I have to go tell everyone. I guess you have a right to be excited. Would you like to go out to dinner tonight to celebrate? I think I'm too wound up to eat anything. You'll probably feel differently when some of the excitement has passed. I have to go call my best friend. Dialogue 2 What's new, Max? I just got some great news. Oh, what is it? My boss just told me I got a promotion. Wow, good for you. I didn't think I would get it, but I did. Why didn't you think you would receive the promotion? Because the competition was fierce. Many of the other people who were up for the job had been at the company much longer than I have. Your boss must really think highly of you to advance you before those others. I guess so. Do you think those other people will be jealous? I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. Don't you care what your coworkers think? I do, but right now I'm so excited that nothing could rain on my parade. Does the job have many perks? Loads. Like what? I get a company car, an expense account, three weeks paid vacation, and a huge raise. That's a lot to be happy about. It's almost too much to believe. How will you celebrate? I think I'll treat myself to a new stereo. I've been putting off buying one because I didn't think I could afford it. Now with my new salary, I can easily pay for it. Dialogue 3 
Why are you so worked up? I just got some fantastic news. What is it? You won't believe this. So come on and tell me already. I just got a new job. That's not so unbelievable. The new job is in Paris. Now that's something worth cheering about. I'm so excited right now I can hardly breathe. Take a moment to catch your breath. I just cannot believe this is happening to me of all people. Why is it so hard for you to believe? Because I'm such a homebody. I'm almost 30 and I've never even left my hometown. Well, Paris is a long way away from here. Do you know any French? I studied for a couple years in high school, but I've forgotten most of it. How will you get by? I should pick up French quickly. Once I'm there, my French will come back to me. Have you told many people yet? Nope, you're the first, but I want to shout it from the rooftop. Next, I'm going to call my parents to break the news to them. Do you think they'll be happy for you? They'll be sad that their son is moving so far away, but they'll be happy for me because they know how much this means to me. Substitutions 1. Kelsey, would you go check the mailbox? Kelsey, would you see if the mail is here? Kelsey, would you find out if the postman has come by? Kelsey, would you see if there is anything in the mailbox? 2. Where is it from? Who sent it? What's the return address? Do you know who it is from? 3. Well, nothing's going to get solved by just standing there and holding it. Well, nothing's going to get revealed by just standing there and holding it. Well, nothing's going to get figured out by just standing there and holding it. Well, nothing's going to get answered by just standing there and holding it. 4. Well, what does it say? Well, what's in it? Well, is it good news? Well, is it bad news? 5. You'll probably feel differently when some of the excitement has passed. You'll probably feel differently when you've calmed down. You'll probably feel differently when you've settled down some. You'll probably feel differently when your enthusiasm has subsided. 6. Good for you. Congratulations. Well done. Nice job. 7. Many of the other people who I was competing against for the job have been at the company much longer than I have. Many of the other people who are also in the running for the job have been at the company much longer than I have. Many of the other people who are in contention for the job have been at the company much longer than I have. 8. I do, but right now I'm so excited that nothing could rain on my parade. I do, but right now I'm so excited that nothing could bring me down. I do, but right now I'm so excited that nothing could reduce my happiness. I do, but right now I'm so excited that nothing could bring me off my high. 9. Does the job have many perks? Does the job have many benefits? Does the job have many bonuses? Does the job have many extras? 10. It's almost too much to believe. 
it's too much for me. I can barely comprehend it all. I can hardly take it all in. 11. I just got some fantastic news. I just got some tremendous news. I just got some excellent news. I just got some marvelous news. 12. So come on and tell me already. Stop beating around the bush. Out with it. Get on with it. 13. I'm so excited right now I can hardly breathe. I'm so wound up right now I can hardly breathe. I'm so keyed up right now I can hardly breathe. I'm so thrilled right now I can hardly breathe. 14. Now that's something worth cheering about. Now that's something worth being excited over. Now that's something worth celebrating. Now that's something worth throwing a party over. 15. No, you're the first, but I want to shout it from the rooftops. No, you're the first, but I want to tell the whole world. No, you're the first, but I want to tell anyone who will listen. No, you're the first, but I want to share the news with everyone. Monologue Americans have many ways of celebrating good news. For major occasions, such as going away to college or a significant birthday, a party is usually called for. Significant birthdays include the 16th, 18th, 21st, 40th, and 100th. The 16th is important because it is usually when teenagers can go and get their driver's licenses. The 18th birthday is noteworthy because one officially becomes a legal adult in most aspects and can vote in political elections. When someone turns 21, they can legally buy and drink alcohol. The 40th birthday signifies the move into middle age, and for many, it is considered the beginning of becoming old. The 100th birthday is obvious, since it is quite a feat to reach that age. For other kinds of events, such as a promotion or a reward for doing a good job on an assignment, maybe a dinner or small gift is needed. These events are usually personal or work-related and aren't generally recognized major milestones. Embarrassing Experiences Basic Patterns I can't believe I said something that stupid at the party. I just spilled my drink all over my pants. Halfway through my speech, I forgot the rest of what I wanted to say. I didn't notice the stain until I got to work. He tripped and fell right in front of the guests. She came to the party in the same dress as me. My ex-girlfriend told everyone at the party about me. He was so sick that he vomited right in the middle of dinner. I just realized that this shirt isn't clean. Someone told Bob what I said about him. That has to be my most embarrassing moment ever. That shouldn't be enough to cause you to quit. That is a little embarrassing. Still, you shouldn't stop doing something you liked just because of one incident. I embarrassed myself the entire evening.
Dialogue 1. Hi, Mitch. Hi, Bethany. I meant to ask you earlier how your speech went. I'd rather not talk about it. That bad? Worse. I'm so sorry. Do you mind if I asked what happened? It's too embarrassing. You can tell me. I completely forgot my speech. Oh no! What did you do? I stood at the podium for five minutes trying to remember how it went, but I just couldn't recall it. Didn't you have any notes? No. I was so confident about giving the speech that I didn't bother with any notes. Did you manage to somehow finish the speech? No. After standing in silence for five minutes, I just ran off the stage. What did everyone else do? They didn't know how to react, so they just let the next speaker talk. How embarrassing. I don't think I'll ever get over it. In time you will. I don't know about that. That has to be my most embarrassing moment ever. You'll do better next time. I don't think there will be a next time. Dialogue 2 Hi, Ross. Hi, Caitlin. What are you doing here at the supermarket? I'm just getting some shopping done. Why do you ask? I just thought you usually had dance practice at this time. I normally do. Why don't you have dance practice today? There is dance practice, but I decided not to go. Why not? I'm not doing dance anymore. But I thought you really enjoyed it. I did, but not anymore. What made you change your mind? Nothing. Must have been something. It's not something I like to talk about. It's okay to tell me. If you must know, I screwed up at the last dance recital. That shouldn't be enough to cause you to quit. Trust me, it was. What was so bad? In the middle of the recital, I lost my balance and fell over. That is a little embarrassing. I also knocked over the girl dancing beside me. Oh, no. It was awful. The entire audience burst out into hysterics. I couldn't believe I could be so clumsy. Still, you shouldn't stop doing something you like just because of one incident. I might consider going back. Dialogue 3 Hey, John. I've been trying to catch up with you. Why? I wanted to know how your date went. That is not a topic that I want to go over. But you were so excited about it. What happened to change that? The entire evening was a disaster. It couldn't have been that bad. I assure you it was. I embarrassed myself the entire evening. What went wrong? Where do I begin? First, there was so much traffic that I was almost half an hour late. That definitely isn't fashionably late. She was really understanding about that, so I thought the rest of the evening would be okay. It wasn't? No. I decided to take her to a very expensive restaurant to make up for my being late. That should have been more than enough to make up for it. It would have been if the dinner had gone well. This doesn't sound good. During dinner, I somehow managed to spill my wine all over her dress. I was such a klutz. Couldn't you have offered to get it cleaned? It was red wine, and that doesn't come out. I guess the evening was a disaster. I'm not finished yet. What else happened? When I went to pay for the meal, I discovered I didn't have my wallet. What happened to it? I left it at home. How did you pay for the meal? She had to pay for it. I offered to pay her back, but I don't think she believed that I would. Do you think she'll go out with you again? I didn't dare ask. Substitutions 1. 
I meant to ask you earlier how your speech went. I meant to ask you earlier how did you do on your speech. I meant to ask you earlier did your speech go well. I meant to ask you earlier did you give a successful speech. Two. That bad. So bad. Not good. Could have been better. Three. Do you mind if I ask what happened? Would you be offended if I ask what happened? Am I overstepping if I ask what happened? Would I upset you if I ask what happened? Four. You can tell me. I won't laugh. Don't worry about telling me. It will just be between us. Five. No, I was so confident about giving the speech that I didn't bother with any notes. No, I was so confident about giving the speech that I didn't bother writing anything down. No, I was so confident about giving the speech that I didn't bother bringing any cue cards. No, I was so confident about giving the speech that I didn't bother taking anything to remind me. Six. That has to be my most embarrassing moment ever. That has to be the most embarrassing moment of my life. That has to be the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. That has to be the most embarrassing moment I can remember. Seven. What are you doing here at the supermarket? What are you doing here at the mall? What are you doing here at the drugstore? What are you doing here at the bookstore? Eight. I normally do. I usually do. I typically do. I generally do. Nine. What made you change your mind? What turned your opinion? What made such a drastic change? What made you do a 180? Ten. It's not something I like to talk about. It's not something I like to tell people. It's not something I like to share with others. It's not something I want everyone to know. Eleven. In the middle of the recital, I lost my balance and fell over. In the middle of the program, I lost my balance and fell over. In the middle of the show, I lost my balance and fell over. In the middle of the performance, I lost my balance and fell over. Twelve. I've been trying to catch up with you. I've been looking all over the place for you. I've been looking everywhere for you. I've been searching high and low for you. Thirteen. She was really understanding about that, so I thought the rest of the evening would be okay. She was really understanding about that, so I thought the rest of the evening would turn out fine. She was really understanding about that, so I thought the rest of the evening would be better. She was really understanding about that, so I thought the rest of the evening would be uphill from there. Fourteen. I was such a klutz. I was so clumsy. I was so awkward. I was anything but graceful. Fifteen. When I went to pay for the meal, I discovered I didn't have my wallet. When I went to pick up the check, I discovered I didn't have my wallet. When I went to get the bill, I discovered I didn't have my wallet. 
When I went to pick up the tab, I discovered I didn't have my wallet. Monologue Many Americans will say that one of their greatest fears is public speaking. They fear that they will make a fool of themselves. This fear can lead them to either completely avoid public speaking or enduring extreme anxiety when they are forced into it. Some people even have unpleasant dreams about the many different ways they can embarrass themselves while giving a speech. A common one is entirely forgetting what one wants to say. This anxiety can cause physical symptoms that can vary in intensity, from sweaty palms to full-blown anxiety attacks where a person cannot breathe. The best way to make sure that you don't embarrass yourself while giving a public address is to prepare. Have notes to refer to if you forget a word. It is important not to read directly from them because eye contact with the audience is vital in order to establish a connection with them. Next, as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. The more you are familiar with a speech, the more comfortable you are in saying and remembering the words. Finally, Staying calm is vital to speaking slowly and clearly. The more nervous a person is, the faster he or she usually speaks. <laughs>